As we talk about the alpha house, we could talk about the wing. Uh, it's still a render, but we're actually, um, it's almost completed. But then there is a very sort of um, literal blend of a box and a, uh, a pitch. And by doing so and experimenting with the shape blend and, and uh, and the space blend, if you will, we we introduce this sort of skylight that wraps around the entire um, house, and which is then the hallway uh, where you from where you access these three rooms. Um, so the third one has a skylight to the top as a means of where we are, when we were blending these shapes, there was the opportunity for, for the skylight, which I'm, if I can pull it up without wasting too much of your time, I will um, send you or show you some construction pictures uh, if, I, if, I, if I can manage while talking, which is hard for me. Um, so that, that is something that is almost um, complete and So this building is actually the first building that was built in Bali. And the idea was to elevate and dedicate all the attention to a relic called the Joglo, the uh, sort of the Joglo centerpiece, which is a, is a Javanese um, type building typology made, made of wood, which has four columns in the middle that um, is actually carrying substantial parts of the roof and then surrounded by these four columns is a donut of space and this and the house is defined by a sequence of columns uh, again. So what we wanted to do is to formulate skylights and this roof is not touching this sort of um, vintage looking element which had been purchased bef by the client before we started the architectural design. So we actually, we had that as a constraint. We had that as something that would somehow be integrated in the architectural design. Um, and we wanted to do that by actually not touching that piece at all, right? So these center pieces, they're, they're free of, of the structure and the load bearing columns are coming down here and there is literally a gap and a void between, between this element and, and the roof itself. So we were just simply framing something that uh, that and to make it very specific, and then almost like an archaeologist, you could you know travel around in this in this building and discover uh, these job, these double centerpieces um, by adding this glass element. Um, so you could become you could go go much closer as you would have. And it's, you can expect angles and you can really appreciate the, the craft in a different and, and much closer way. All right. This is an exciting building that we recently completed. It is uh, surrounded by rice fields, and the idea was to hide, so essentially hide the building completely underneath a large roof terrace. And you, you're hiding those sort of standalone spaces and connect them with, an inf with infrastructural elements. And 
you're surrounded by trees and yes those palm trees are not too high yet we've, we've planted those but then you can imagine how how this uh, could feel when it's completely lush and um, you would make use of passive cooling you would each space would feel like there was surrounded by green as uh, you know the client was he came from jakarta and he wanted to kind of leave city life behind and so each of the spaces should be you know completely surrounded by green and and that's why um, we use this as the key drivers to shape this very reductive design that almost is more of a infrastructural base for other buildings to be standing on top and really utilizing the the roof terrace and so on top we, we just place these sort of gazebos of traditional buildings that would then become the silhouette and the and the house would completely disappear um you know against against the landscape and all you would see is these uh, you know traditional looking uh grass roofs um yeah so something that's it's it's probably the most understated building in terms of form but the way you travel around in this small village you know a house as a village by by having these intersections and and creating these these very warm separate spaces i thought that that was really cool uh, and and it, it it just makes me happy every time i go through there because it's like it is something that has absolutely is not you know showing this flamboyance of the alpha house or, or the other houses that we have built it's something very grounded earthy and you know after doing all this amplitude and craziness you know you settle back in and see the other other end of the spectrum so there's a completely different understanding of architecture in this in this building which is not about anything other than a family wanting to live together in a specific way and be surrounded by trees and i thought that that was um, very nice um, so you can see you're just kind of diving through the through that membrane um going up and then you you see the pool in the back which is you know then surrounded by all those rice fields. there's some solar panels here on the left as i believe that uh we we, we should contribute in in reducing our uh our energy consumption and things like that and so part of this roof terrace idea is to expand and Flo and I are thinking about putting an office up there, or like some or a yoga shala, yoga space of some sort. So the, the building is pretty much not a building. Uh, it is a base. It's a chessboard for something that may happen in in the future, right? So very interesting building to me um, as a contrast to to what I've showed you before. And in the background of this building, and then the way, why is this all leaning is because we literally wanted to feel that descending contour of the space to reduce the amount of earthwork and moving stuff around was something that then was probably eclipsed in the in the project that is adjacent to this uh, 
which you can see in the back here. And these are our still studios. And so the still studios were created by Flo, which is actually the, the client of the house that I just showed you. And, and I, because he comes from a sort of entrepreneurial background and I, you know, I tend to do architectural design most, most of the time. So we wanted to merge something and create architecture in form of a product to make it more accessible to a wider audience maybe an audience that can't uh, that can't afford the architects for them to design we wanted to do something that you could replicate also because it's a pain in the ass to always design for people and you know so as a part of this we were like oh, how great would it be if we could perfectionize like one product and then we could put it anywhere and, and this is how we started Still Studios, right? So, and these Still Studios, as the title or as the as the company name describes, is built is is framing our point of contribution um, by putting buildings on stilts, right? And the reason why that works really well in certain areas is because you can lift mass off the ground reduce the physical footprint of those buildings and in the case of studio a also create some efficiency by using our four abstracted four joglo centerpiece columns and hang mass off it so as you know the tension elements can be thinner than compression elements um, so hanging stuff takes much less material than prompting up stuff. Why? Because you don't have anything like buckling or uh, the cross section of members and columns, you know, has to be thick, not to sustain weight uh, going alongside the Z axis, but also has to combine all the other forces that are acting on this building, which is horizontal forces, torsion, and as a consequence of that, we have bracing and, 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 and these things. So the Still Studios are a very exciting project, and we have now six or seven of these. Um, let me see if I can show you some. So you see these center poles that are braced by the staircase that is holding those four poles together and creates a solid base. And the solid base has foundations, um, pile foundations that are counteracting the horizontal forces that are acting on this building. Now in Bali, we don't have a lot of wind speeds, so the, the foundation may be different than you know, when we bring this element to uh, more exposed areas like the Philippines, you know, or, or you know, Hong Kong or, or stuff like that. So, of course, the, the complexity of the, of the foundation could vary. But what, so the idea was is to hang both the roof and the floor of these trex, no, it's not trex time. It's these rods, right? These rods that um, can be very thin and in a Miesian sense liberate the wall or in this case the facade from the actual structure so we bring down so we're hanging this floor um, and we're hanging this roof which through which we can reduce the members and through which we can achieve something that looks like it can't deliver but it actually isn't because it's just hanging right so we can reduce the cross section of the floor members, which I found, found was great. And by the way, this is inspired by the Dimaxion uh, Buckminster Fuller. If I have it open here, no, I'll just put it here. Dimaxion House, because he also did a car. Um, so oh, you can see this is quite interesting, right? 
Um, so he he did some stuff which I thought was great. Um, so some of the the first model inspiration is there by a reference to the you know one of these big uh, gods of, of, of architecture. Um, so now, so we can we can potentially elongate this uh, four columns as the high as we can possibly allow, and then we can have spiraling or helix or organized spaces, as we can always stop the staircase wherever we want. So we can corkscrew up and then have different directions and have different functions associated to the to the different levels, right? So you can see that it's a terrace. There's actually the first level is the bathroom, and the highest level is in this case the bedroom, and the mid levels are the um, is the living room. So you're creating a system and a logical system and framework in which you can really become very free. So you can you allow yourself to change in height. You allow yourself to change in dimension, and I think that. Uh, that's cool um, because you're never thinking about design once, right? You're always driven by thoughts and asking the right questions. What if I would do the opposite? What if I would do, couldn't we do that? Couldn't we do the combination or the addition of these two things and how would the shape as a consequence of that look like? Something that you cannot conceive by just standing and saying this is how it's supposed to be and this is not how it's supposed to be, right? The black or the white. There's a lot of fades and gradients in this. So uh, this is an eight by eight meter. And you see we um, cheated some um, compression elements here <laughs> in, 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 the, in the downstairs because this was our prototype, right? So we, were, we had to reinforce some of the stuff for the new units. We were able to span without uh, these braces again. So it, because we challenged this and we have this um, a roof terrace that is attached. So the Changu Garden, it's called, the part of, of, of uh, Bali, is consists of like a very dense arrangement of, um, of these buildings. But, you know, it creates a lot of privacy by putting the green back into the context and using it as a passive cooling elements and so forth. Um, I want to make sure we're uh, within your time frame, so please interrupt me whenever you feel it's getting either too boring or too long. You can see this cantilever would have never Hi. been. Hi. Five minutes? Ten minutes is good. Yes. Okay. Ten minutes. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. So you can see the span would have never been possible with a thin column like that. Absolutely unthinkable. And the, so it's, um, yeah, that, that's great, I think. Um, and you can see no one's perfect. We've, we've got to work on these things, right? So we, we have a very high turnover of, of, of these modules and units that we're building, but you have to start somewhere, right? And nothing's ever perfect. So I encourage any one of you who wants to start their own studio, find a niche, you know, as small as it may be, do the most imperfect start as long as you do start, right? So it's very important that you overcome this resistance of limitation, right? And there will you there's one thing's guaranteed, nothing's perfect, and you will do mistakes, and that's why we have to find a way of treating each other that we allow ourselves mistakes and that we find a common goal. Uh, may it be a building, may it be a relationship, may it be politics, may it be, you know, different cultures being united and living, you know, uh, in great diversity together in a unity. Whatever it is we have to do, I think it's key to, to our, allow ourselves to do mistakes because if we don't do anything, stuff gets stagnant, stuff gets distorted, and we, we're we just lost in, in, in chaos. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, all these things that I'm doing or we're doing as a team, and I'm hopefully, you know, inspiring 
uh, some others to 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 do architecture or art or music or whatever it is in a way that is without fear and without or with the ability and cultivate cultivate cultivation of experimentation and being okay with being in the fog you know because everything is so much greater than we can we are anyway we see it now what's happening with COVID. it's much greater than us and forces so i do i do surf as well and for the people that surf they know the the, the power of the ocean is something you can only surrender to and keep calm in this sort of uncertainty and this sheer power of what the phenomenon of existence has on us. There is so many forces, maybe your parents, maybe the background, maybe anything, everything is acting on everything, right? So whatever chance that you have, take it and don't wait um, a split second because in the most compromised way, you find ways. And in whatever scale that you're operating in, maybe a building or a lamp or a pen or whatever it is, uh, or a piece of music, it's always the same blueprint because it's a blueprint of, of, of being guided by a higher power. And it's the blueprint of being, of doing so, and being guided by without fear and with joy for experimentation and joy for creativity through curiosity so maybe we end here and 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 fade over to to the q a or how, how should we do it i can also keep talking if you want um, so maybe one last word to the to the actual title of this um i i was intrigued by working on small scale architecture like the still studio suggests and to come up with ways of organizing space not driven by size and luxury but driven by experience and part of the still studio experience is, of, is, is the view and being able to be placed in sort of hard to use slots, possibly being taken down at a, at, after, after a couple of years being replaced or replaced in a sense of relocated. Um, so I thought that this is uh, something that yeah, triggered uh, a whole family of different units in different sizes and some of them um, we rendered out so this is our first model uh, Dipto did this great renderings um, so then we have a second model which in this case, this is actually going to be for me because there's no glass in here. There's just passive, there's just shading elements that you can close. Mosquitoes, I'll reduce the space of mosquito freeness uh, to the bed, um, or I use mosquito repellent. Uh, and so I, I take out the heat gain through the gla through the gla glazing, uh, but we will have this unit also with glass behind as a second rail layer. Um, this is going to be our new architectural studio. Uh, it's an octagon shaped building that's on stilts as well. Again, driven by the idea of having a, the most minimal impact on the land, being consisting of or the same cross section over and over eight times again in this. In, in this case, um, we try to do the rainwater harvesting by using a color bond metal roof. And we try to do everything in a way that it can be unscrewed. Um, we're also working on, for all these buildings, 
we are working on uh, mass timber options to replace steel on the long run. And as we know, steel has a high energy footprint, um, but it has also high performance. So there's an equilibrium in there. So we need less material, but it has a higher, it has a higher uh, uh, carbon emission uh, quotient. So we're we're in by no means a green architecture studio. We are impacting with whatever it is that we do. And as we're changing and as I'm changing as a human being, and I have changed, well, we do that every day, but especially in the past eight months, you know, a lot of new content has come up in my, in my consciousness and there is this battle and struggle and like you can't do everything the right way, but you can do a part of it and point and point at stuff. So other people may find even better, better solutions to this than what you see here. And as we know, nothing is perfect and everything is an ongoing cycle and development. And the more fluid and the more fluidity there is, the, the better. So someone then, please take over and maybe join the team or, you know, if you have other ideas of how we could improve these buildings, then um, please inbox. Uh, so that being said, 